Ah, well, that was what it started yeah, it was. was at school because like like a lot of people at school in our hometown, yeah, nobody was really interested in going to school, going or, to school or, yeah. or we doing didn't it. have many hopes or dreams. Uh, <laughs> and the, the music was the kind of thing that allowed us when we weren't going to classes just to go play guitar and stuff like mm. that. And at the weekends we would kind of all get together with our friends and play guitars in the forest and drink cider and stuff like that. Right. It was just, Something that brought There's us all together. Something beautiful about it. Uh, <laughs> something we were all interested in. You know what I mean? So we would go to gigs and just want to try and imitate that. <laughs> well, previously, like he was a joiner, like a carpenter, and See. I was like a roof slater and tiler. Right, right, right. The drummer, he's a mechanic. He's a mechanic. And Jody guitarist. He's, he's just a, a stoner. Yeah, he, he is. Aye, that's <laughs> his so technical like, term is uh, qualified. He's qualified. He's got papers, <laughs> like from school, like qualified stoner. Right, so that's kind of what you thought so about I mean, the thing is, like, we've always played music when we were younger and realised like, we kind of didn't seem to be going anywhere and stuff like that, so we had to like, move into the real world, go right. on jobs and stuff like that and realised maybe, maybe it was just, just like, the real world's fucking scary. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should have stuck in music, so we got back into it and stuff like that and just put some music online, just kind of in like a really kind of home demo style thing. Mm. And then um, noticed we getting a bit of traction online and stuff like that, so put a few gigs on and stuff like that and we're like, People actually like this shit, shockingly. <laughs> when, we, when we were growing up, all we done was kind of listen to music, attend festivals like this, and it's aye, it's it's a bit surreal to be able to come and play them now, but hard work pays off, you know what I mean? on your own like no promo you hit Spotify and got like over a million streams that's crazy and also really exciting because at the moment in the music industry there is space for bands and artists to do that do you feel like there's a reason why um, it happened for you like that or was it just complete collision of coincidence I think people are tired, tired of listening to shit <laughs> I think basically it was always a plan to kind of play on outside the scene because a lot of your local scenes, especially in music right now, are kind of cliqued and kind of excluding people who are interested in music and interested in being at live music events but don't feel part of it and don't feel part of the songs that are being sung. Uh, another plan was always to write music that was bringing people in that could be received and spread out across their kind of daily lives. It was, I, think, I feel like that's where success comes. As soon as we felt like people were interested, it just kind of made Spurs us, turn, us the, turn the speed up, we were practicing every day and we, I mean, we still do, it's just all the time just making sure that the hard work was going into it because we just reaped the benefits of music when you put the time in. Mm. So it was kind of like, just kept spurring us on. And, and even you get to like, drink beers like, yeah, just all, all the day, time. Yeah, just all But also, <laughs> then it kind of gets to like, then like once we'd left our jobs, it was like the real world is just there chasing mm. you. So it's like that kind of encourages us like it, <laughs> everything needs to be better because the real world is still hunting us down every day. <laughs> so it's like now it's just like it's part of the struggle, do you know what I mean? Like we just want to do what we do forever. 
still remember recording like the Matador EP. Even Sing for Your Supper, we done that in our mate's bedroom. We done Sing for Your Supper, Glasgow, and uh, another song e- for like a hundred quid or something. Wow! And then yeah. that EP, I think we done a big show in uh, in, a home, in our hometown. We just up for our hometown. We done a big show, and that paid for the EP. And it was, so it was like, have we done all those recordings on like fifteen hundred pounds? For us being a band has been able to like, kind of write songs about things that you kind of probably find hard to talk about or other people find hard to talk about and stuff like that, do you know what I mean? And just being able to kind of express yourself and not have to kind of actually say things out loud that you're feeling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's, just, it's kind of about just getting to be creative with your actual emotions rather than like having to convey them in like an actual literal sense, do you know what I mean? Like, can you give me a second just while you powder your nose? Tell me how you wise. I like classic rose in your face. You see the rocks, things that you only got. A big thing for us is like, it really, do you know, those four or five months, it kind of gave our audience a chance to kind of digest the album, really get to grips with it. So, see, when we are coming to these live shows, do you know, every track you're starting to feel just that bounce back from the audience because they know the songs, like they know every lyric, do you know what I mean? So see, you feel that back, it's almost kind of surreal feeling that album getting spouted back to you like so long after it was released, but it's, it's incredible. Man, do you want to be the best fan in the world? We always have, do you know what I mean? I mean, I mean, like, we like, I mean, there's definitely two people in this room that believe that we are. Yeah, and, and then I also know there is two people outside this room that also believe we are, and that would be Jack's mum <laughs> no, okay, no, 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 uh, and my uncle. I. But no, no it's, it's important for us, like, it's, it's definitely something that's positive, and especially with like a kind of a real kind of decrease in like how popular guitar music is. It's something that we kind of really aspire to make sure that. It can get out in the forefront again and inspire mm-hmm. like inspire younger generations to make bands and pick up the guitar and stuff like that and just start writing songs about kind of how they're feeling and stuff like that. It's like, important for us. End of the day, I don't think it's too egotistical to think everybody wants to make a footprint in the world. Do you know what I mean? Like you want mm. to be remembered for fucking something, and I would rather be this. Yeah, than if like, remembered for you know, like committing war crimes or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, this is quite wholesome. <laughs> like, this is beautiful. What you're saying, these words are beautiful. <laughs> Deny that. Music is such a big part of the culture, especially where we're from and places here. Um, I think you know, that feeling of being ignored was something that was frustrating, and that was a kind of that was a kind of place that we chose to kind of try and express that through sending letters. Um, but I think you know, I think there has been changes made. You know, there's in Scotland, I know for sure there's like kind of big tour fund for small venues and stuff like that. So you know, even if even if that letter like letters that we sent kind of put some of that stuff in motion, or even just in the in the heads of the right people. For sure that's something we would do over and over again. It's kind of, it's kind of like Scotland, there's kind of a couple of different music scenes in Scotland, so it's like, there's kind of a, a kind of cliquey scene uh, right across the central belt, and we're kind of, we didn't really sit in that scene, we kind of do our own thing, we don't really like, we're not really part of the leather jacket, black jean brigade, if you can imagine, so it's like, uh, we kind of do our own thing, so. Uh, we kind of make our own scene. Uh, like, in Scotland, it's quite good. You see, kind of, there's a lot of music coming out of Scotland at the moment, and I think uh, kind of Scottish people like to see the progression for people going through kind of playing to like 50 people and then watching them going to a bigger stage, a bigger stage, and they can really kind of be a part of that journey with a band or an artist. So it's, it's always kind of been like that in Scotland, and I know in a lot of other places as well. This next song, uh, this next song is for you, Glasgow. In my song, I was 
and be the voice to tell you no. Promise you this, I'll always love the way that you say Glasgow. Promise you this, I'll always love the way that you say. Yeah, will he fall? 